Our planet never fails to surprise us, and it seems that if we venture to the most isolated and unexplored places, there's a good chance we'll stumble upon something astounding. From bizarre establishments to bridges that lead to nowhere, here are 20 most incredible discoveries found in the middle of nowhere. Number 20. Missing 84-Year-Old Dogs are man's best friend. It's quite easy to prove this statement with all of the stories on the internet about how dogs touch people's lives, but perhaps this story is among the most touching. There's nothing more wonderful than when an animal saves a human's life. This story happened in November 2022. 84-year-old Gregorio Romero, affectionately known as Don Goyo, walked near his village in Sonora, Mexico, or at least that was the plan. It was normal for the man to take walks every day, but this time he didn't return. A few days passed and he was nowhere to be seen. It was then that his family began to worry. After four days, Ramona, Don Goyo's niece, alerted the police. Now you're probably wondering why it took them four days before reporting Don Goyo's disappearance. You see, Don Goyo was known to visit nearby villages and return after a few days, so his family didn't worry at first. A search party was formed, consisting of the Mexican National Guard, the Municipal Police, and the Municipal Civil Protection Unit. Despite their concerted efforts, which included employing a trained sniffer dog, they couldn't locate Romero even after three days of extensive searching. It was then that El Palomo, a brown mongrel, was brought in as a last resort. Palomo was Don Goyo's beloved dog. The authorities had low hopes of finding Don Goyo. To their surprise, the dog led them through hills and ravines. There, in the middle of nowhere, they found the 84-year-old visibly weak. It turned out that the old man had wandered aimlessly for days through the desert. With his age, Don Goyo experienced lapses in his memory which might have led to him getting lost. Needless to say, the locals and the emergency rescuers were all impressed by Palomo and his astounding bravery. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now. Number 19. Greek Hachiko Since we're already on the topic of dogs, here's another that will surely tug on your heartstrings. Unfortunately, no matter how lovable dogs are, some still get abandoned. Several people have experienced seeing dogs and even puppies on a deserted highway, often left behind by irresponsible owners. This dog, however, is quite different. You might already know of the famous Hachiko. The Akita used to wait for his owner in front of the Shibuya train station, even after 10 years of his owner's death. If you haven't read about his story yet, I suggest you do, but prepare some tissues. There's even a movie about him, but I digress. The story of this dog is quite similar to Hachi's. This remarkable dog, now known as the Greek Hachiko, mirrors the story of Hachiko, a Japanese Akita renowned for his loyalty. Harris, the dog's owner, was 40 years old when he lost his life in a collision with a cement mixer. The incident occurred on the Old Ring Road to the River Evanos, and it had a profound impact on the local community, especially since Harris' brother had also died in a similar accident just a few years before. What's astonishing is how this dog located the exact spot of the fatal crash, about seven and a half miles from his home in Nafpektos. Despite numerous efforts by the locals to offer him a new home, he refused to leave the roadside shrine dedicated to his owner. Instead, he chose to grieve at the very site of the tragedy, returning every time someone tried to move him. Moved by the dog's dedication, the local community in Nafpektos decided to support him in his vigil. They built a little shelter for him beside the road, provided him with food and water, and even crafted a shrine for Harris. Who's cutting onions? Number 18. Svalbard Global Seed Vault There's nothing more out of place than seeing a massive building in the middle of nowhere. This is the Doomsday Vault. It might sound sinister, but it's actually something quite useful. Located deep within a mountain on Spitsbergen, the largest island in Norway's Svalbard archipelago, is the Svalbard Global Seed Vault. As its name suggests, this structure contains seeds, tens of thousands of food crop seed samples. This vault serves as a global insurance policy for the biodiversity of the world's food plants, safeguarding their seeds against potential global crises. The history of the seed vault dates back to 1984, when the Nordic Gene Bank began storing seeds in an abandoned coal mine near Longyearbyen. 
Svalbard was selected as the ideal location due to its cold conditions and permafrost, which are crucial for seed preservation. The vault officially opened on February 26, 2008. Since it's received seed consignments from around the world, its first anniversary marked the storage of over 400,000 food crop seed samples, including a diverse range of crops like potatoes, wheat, and barley. Yes, 400,000. The facility, funded by the Norwegian government and the Crop Trust, is designed to operate without permanent staff and can preserve most major food crop seeds for hundreds and, in some cases, thousands of years. Number 17. The Mojave Phone Booth Before we get into the Mojave Phone Booth, have you heard of the term gatekeeping? Gatekeeping formally means controlling access or limiting participation in a particular community or culture. But in social media lingo, Gatekeeping is when you hide something just because you don't want others to get into it, or for it to become mainstream. Artists, for instance, might hide items they've purchased to prevent them from being emptied from stores. Others might gatekeep their favorite artists. Urban explorers on the internet have also begun gatekeeping sites because, well, when a site becomes popular, it often leads to the location being destroyed or vandalized. Such is what happened to the Mojave phone booth. Initially set up in 1948 for miners working at the Chima Cinder Mine, the phone booth stood at the intersection of two dirt tracks in the middle of the Mojave Desert, about 12 miles from the nearest paved road. It was a solitary structure in an expansive desert, serving as a vital communication link for those in remote areas. The booth gained widespread fame in the late 1990s when a man from Los Angeles, after noticing a telephone icon on a map of the Mojave Desert, decided to explore it. His subsequent letter to an underground magazine, including the phone booth's number, caught the attention of Godfrey Daniels in Arizona, who created a website dedicated to it. After that, well, a huge number of people began calling the booth while others visited it. Some even camped around it to answer calls. Soon enough, the booth began to be covered by graffiti from visitors. However, this popularity led to its downfall. The National Park Service, concerned about the environmental impact and the disturbance to local wildlife due to the influx of visitors, requested Pacific Bell to remove the phone booth in 2000. This action was met with disappointment by some who had come to rely on it for communication. Can you think of anything else that's been ruined due to its popularity? It can be anything. I'll go first. Music festivals. Those of you who attended music festivals in the late 1990s to the early 2000s would know that prices before weren't this insane, and it was far easier to get tickets. But now? Well, good luck getting tickets with 20,000 people ahead of you in the queue. Leave your answers in the comments. Number 16. Mexican Bank in the Middle of Nowhere Most banks can be found in populated areas. After all, there's no use for a bank in the middle of nowhere. Aside from the fact that no one would use it, isolation means it's easier to rob. And so imagine the surprise of many when this Mexican bank was established miles away from the nearest settlement. This branch can be found in the Mexican state of Chihuahua. The bank's unusual location initially sparked criticism toward officials for wasteful spending. However, a bank representative explained the reasoning behind the branch's placement. A representative shared that the bank was originally supposed to be built in the more central area of Nuevo Casas Grandes, a small municipality in Chihuahua. But unfortunately, there was a problem with the plot where it was supposed to be built, so the construction team had no choice but to proceed in a more isolated part of the area. Number 15. House on the Drina River You want no neighbors? Well, this might be the perfect spot for you. This is the Drina River House a structure located on the Drina River located in Serbia. This quaint wooden cabin-like house perched on a rock in the middle of the river near the town of Bahina Bashta has a rich history that dates back to 1968. It was initially constructed by a group of swimmers who sought shelter on the rock during their summer escapades. However, it's also tied to a local legend involving the medieval hero Kraljevic Marko. The story goes that the hero needed to cross the river but didn't want his horse to enter the deep water. Marco then threw a large boulder into the river, which stopped in the center, allowing his horse to hop across it. The rock where the house now stands is believed to be the same one from this legend. Over the years, the house has been rebuilt multiple times due to destruction by the river's high water levels. By 2019, it had been destroyed and reconstructed seven times. 
The construction involved transporting lighter materials directly to the rock by boats and kayaks, while heavier lumber logs were floated down to the site. The house quickly became a popular gathering spot, known as a romantic getaway. The Drina River House gained widespread attention after establishing the Drina Regatta in 1994, which made more people aware of its existence. In fact, it became one of the most photographed objects in Serbia. Number 14. The Mystery Spot The Mystery Spot, located in the Redwood Forests outside Santa Cruz, California, is among the most mysterious spots in the world. Pretty obvious from its name, but why exactly? This establishment was opened in 1939 by George Prather, an electrician, mechanic, and inventor. The mystery spot has fascinated and perplexed people for decades. Prather was inspired by the Oregon Vortex and decided to create a similar attraction after experiencing a sense of dizziness and observing a jittering compass on his property. This intriguing spot is essentially a gravitational anomaly and a visual illusion. It's a circular area with a diameter of about 150 feet where visitors experience what appear to be gravity-defying phenomena. Inside a tilted room on the site, people's perceptions of height and orientation of objects are distorted, making falls appear to roll uphill and enabling people to lean at impossible angles without falling. Psychologists explain that these illusions are due to the slanted angle of the house, which significantly impacts our vision, especially when our bodies are also tilted. This distorted orientation causes our senses to recede, enhancing our visual senses. While tour guides offer entertaining theories like the impact of a meteor or an electromagnetic field, these are more for amusement than scientific explanations. Number 13. Kotsky Pillar The Kotsky Pillar in Georgia is a striking natural limestone monolith standing about 130 feet. It became known for its religious significance around the 4th century. The first people who climbed this astounding monolith were Alexander Japardise and his team in July 1944. On top, they discovered remnants of two churches dating from the 5th and 6th centuries. Since 1995, the site has seen a revival of religious activity, most notably with monk Maxim Kavtaradze living atop the pillar for over two decades. Number 12. Most Isolated Store Imagine taking a photo of a mountain zooming in and seeing a store perched a staggering 393 feet on a cliffside. This isn't Photoshop. This is an actual store in the Hunan province of China. This cliffside shop is often called the most inconvenient convenience store in China. After all, you need to climb over 390 feet to buy anything from here. And yes, even the storekeeper climbs to the store every day. However, the storekeeper here is a professional rock climber. Meanwhile, the store's stock is replenished daily with the help of a zipline. The store has garnered attention on social media, with users expressing amazement and admiration for this unique shopping experience high up on a cliff. If you're interested in climbing this store, just know that you must climb for about 90 minutes to reach this location. When you get there, only one or two people can fit inside the store. You can buy water, energy drinks, biscuits, and protein bars here. It's a pretty cool location, and it's definitely a great experience, but only if you have climbing experience. Number 11. Loneliest Monk Imagine living in the middle of a Tibetan lake, about a hundred miles away from civilization. This is the home of Awang Pinsuo, also known as the loneliest monk in the world. This temple, often called the Stone on the Mountain, is located on an isolated spit of land stretching into Yamdrak Lake, about 100 miles from the nearest town. Gansi, and three miles from a small village. In this place, Awang Pinsuo dedicates his life to chanting sutras, meditating, and carrying water from the lake to the temple. It's not easy to leave this location. After all, this isolated temple has been under the watch of solitary monks for over 700 years, with each monk passing on their duties to a successor. It might sound impossible and even scary living here alone, but I can imagine that three days to a week of staying here will surely do wonders for an office worker. You see, the isolation of this place makes it a perfect hideout. But remember, it's a religious place. At night, one can clearly see the stars here. After all, there's no light pollution in this place. It's also close to nature, and you can easily see Tibetan antelopes scampering across the mountains. The few who have been lucky enough to visit the temple have shared impeccable stories of days of peace and quiet. Number 10. The Bridge to Nowhere 
Nestled deep within the rugged wilderness of the San Gabriel Mountains, you'll find a fascinating and somewhat enigmatic structure known as the Bridge to Nowhere, and it's exactly what its name suggests. The bridge was constructed in 1936 as part of a grand plan for a road connecting the San Gabriel Valley to Wrightwood. The devastating floods of 1938 washed away large portions of the road, leaving the bridge marooned in the middle of the canyon. As a result, the once promising highway project was abandoned, earning this remarkable structure its intriguing nickname. Over the years, the bridge to nowhere has become a hub for hikers, thrill seekers, and those searching for a unique adventure. Accessible only via a challenging roughly five-mile hike along the scenic East Fork Trail, this remote location promises both serenity and exhilaration as you navigate the rugged terrain and traverse several river crossings. Nature has reclaimed the area today, but many continue to visit this place to bungee jump. However, some simply spectate the view from the vantage point and take photos. Number 9. Devil's Kettle This is the Devil's Kettle, a mysterious spot in Minnesota's Judge C.R. Magney State Park. For so long, everyone has been wondering where the water in the Devil's Kettle ends up. You see, there's a waterfall on the Brule River, and at one point, the river splits into two. One part keeps flowing like any other river, but the other part disappears into a big hole, which we call the kettle. Again, no one really knows where this ends up. Scientists have tried all sorts of tricks to solve this puzzle. They poured colored dye into the kettle and tracked it with GPS, but the water's ultimate destination remains a mystery. Some think it might rejoin the river somewhere underground, but it's still an unsolved mystery. It's also a mystery how the Devil's Kettle formed. Some say it was created by rocks and sand swirling around in the water, while others think glaciers from a long time ago might be responsible. But the truth is, we're not entirely sure. Despite all the scientific investigations, the Devil's Kettle remains a mystery. Number 8. Blue Spring At first glance, many can't believe this body of water is real. However, this is a secret, well, a not-so-secret paradise in Hinatuan, located on the island of Mindanao in the Philippines. Known as the Hinatuan Enchanted River, or the Sacred River for its pristine and mesmerizing water, Flowing into the Philippine Sea and the Pacific Ocean at Barangay Talisay in Surigao del Sur, it's nestled between the barangays of Talisay and Cambatong. The river gained its enchanted reputation from a poem by diplomat Modesto Ferrolan, which led to its moniker, Enchanted River. The river is famous for its mesmerizing blue waters and mysterious depths. Local legends attribute its unique color to fairies who added shades of sapphire and jade. The river is also surrounded by various tales of uncatchable fish and supernatural beings believed to protect it. Since 2017, swimming in the main pool has been restricted for preservation reasons, but a designated swimming area is available for tourists. Number 7. The Highest Point in Belgium If I ask you what the highest point in Belgium is, what would be your guess? I bet none of you would guess that it's a staircase that leads to nowhere. This is the Signal de Boutrange, located in Wema, Belgium, and it's known as the highest point in the country. This place is the remains of an ancient volcano. It looks like a big plateau more than anything else, but it's located about 2,277 feet above sea level, making it the highest point in the country. Now what's the story behind this staircase? Well, some thought that the country's highest point was quite mesmerizing, so in 1923, People erected an 18-foot staircase atop the peak to provide a vantage point for viewing the landscape from exactly 700 meters above sea level. Eleven years later, an observation tower was built atop Signal de Boutrange. The said tower is now taller than this staircase, but hey, the staircase was built first, and it's more interesting. Number 6. Tree Pod Restaurant How would you like to eat several feet up in the air on a nest built out of bamboo? Sounds like a bizarre experience, right? This is exactly what the Tree Pod restaurant in Ampho Kokut, Thailand offers. In this restaurant, servers wear harnesses, and guests are required to take a short trek through the island's beachside rainforest into the lush trees to reach their table, or should I say pod. These pods are handmade by the local craftsmen using locally sourced bamboo and rattan. Don't worry though, guests don't need to do any climbing. The pods are lowered down to the ground, and electric cables are responsible for hoisting them 36 feet in the air. 
Indulging in a meal while floating among the forest canopy would undoubtedly enhance the experience like never before. What's more, patrons in this restaurant are also free to spectate the Gulf of Thailand. I'd probably be too paranoid to eat here, but I'm sure adrenaline seekers and other adventurous people would like the thrill of being suspended high up in the air while experiencing the scrumptious local cuisine. If any of you have tried this before, or any other similar restaurant, feel free to share your experience in the comments down below. Number 5. The Lightning Field If you find yourself walking in the middle of nowhere and come across rows of vertically standing sticks, you might have discovered the Lightning Field. The Lightning Field, created in 1977 by the American sculptor Walter de Maria, is an iconic work of land art situated in a remote area of the high desert in western New Mexico. This vast installation comprises around 400 polished stainless steel poles strategically placed in a grid array measuring 1.5 kilometers by 1 kilometer. The poles, which are pointed at the top, create a stunning visual effect that becomes even more dramatic during lightning storms, though the occurrence of lightning cannot be predicted. Of course, if you're deathly afraid of lightning and thunder, this might not be the best experience for you. But just in case you want to come here, you need to book an advanced reservation. The visiting season runs from May 1st to October 31st each year, and reservations are offered on a first-come, first-served basis. The site includes a cabin that can accommodate up to six guests, providing basic amenities like bathrooms, a kitchen, and a common room. It's important to note that day visits, camping, and pets are not permitted at the Lightning Field. Of course, it's for their own safety. Would you be interested in coming here? I know I would. Number 4. Old Man of the Mountain the Old Man of the Mountain, also known as the Great Stone Face, was a notable natural rock formation located in Franconia Notch State Park, New Hampshire. This distinctive profile, resembling the jagged outline of an old man's face, became a beloved symbol of New Hampshire, appearing on the state's license plates and even its statehood quarter. The formation, around 40 feet tall and 25 feet wide, was first recorded by white settlers in 1805 and quickly gained prominence particularly after being highlighted in writings by statesman Daniel Webster and author Nathaniel Hawthorne. Unfortunately, the old man of the mountain collapsed in the early hours of May 3, 2003, due to natural erosion processes. This event caused widespread dismay among New Hampshire residents and visitors alike, with many people visiting the site to pay tribute. In the aftermath, there were discussions about creating a replica or other forms of commemoration but these were ultimately set aside in favor of creating a memorial at the site. Today, the Old Man of the Mountain Profiler Plaza is the only thing left behind in the area. The memorial features steel profiler rods designed by sculptors Ron Magers and Shelley Bradbury. These rods, when aligned from specific viewing points, recreate the profile of the old man against the backdrop of Cannon Cliff. This inventive approach allows visitors to experience the essence of the Old Man of the Mountain even after its collapse. The plaza also includes museum displays that educate the public about the old man's legacy, the geology that created him, and the mechanics that kept him from falling much sooner. This memorial, completed in September 2020, represents the collective effort of the New Hampshire community to preserve the memory of this unique natural wonder. Number 3. Noah's Ark? Now here's quite an intriguing discovery. Recent archaeological excavations in Turkey have led to what could be the next great breakthrough, a mound that might be connected to the legendary Noah's Ark. A team comprising researchers from both Turkish and American universities has been exploring a site near the Iran-Turkey border. This area, known as the Darupinar Formation, is characterized by a boat-shaped geological feature about 538 feet long and primarily composed of limonite. The researchers have uncovered intriguing materials dating back to between 5500 and 3000 BC. These materials include what they describe as clayey materials, marine materials, and seafood. This time frame interestingly aligns with a period when some scholars believe the Great Flood, as described in the Bible's Old Testament, might have occurred. Despite these promising findings, however, solid evidence is yet to be found. While the dimensions of the mound closely match the biblical description of the Ark, an actual piece of the Ark is yet to be discovered. This discovery has sparked a mix of excitement and skepticism within the scientific and archaeological communities. While some see it as a potentially groundbreaking find that could link a well-known biblical story with a physical location, others caution against jumping to conclusions without more substantial evidence. Number 2. 
Atacama Video Game Burial The Atacama Video Game Burial, more commonly known as the Atari Video Game Burial, is definitely among the most unexpected discoveries in the middle of nowhere. After all, who would expect to see a trove of old and vintage video game cartridges in the middle of the desert? This burial also has quite an interesting history. It occurred in 1983 in Alamogordo, New Mexico, where the Atari Corporation, a titan in the early video game industry, buried unsold video game cartridges. This event has since become a symbol of the video game crash of 1983 and a cautionary tale of business hubris. The burial was driven by several factors, including the underwhelming sales of Atari's video game adaptation of the film E.T. The Extraterrestrial. Considered by many as one of the worst video games ever made, as per public opinion, E.T. was developed in a rushed time frame due to delays in licensing rights. Atari produced 5 million cartridges, but only sold about 1.5 million, leaving a large surplus of unsold stock. In September 1983, Atari disposed of truckloads of unsold boxes, cartridges, and systems in the Alamogordo landfill. It was reported that this included popular games like E.T., Pac-Man, and Ms. Pac-Man, as well as consoles and computers. The landfill was chosen because it did not allow scavenging, and the waste was crushed and buried nightly. The discarded inventory was a mix of returned and unsold material, mostly deemed inoperable. The burial was covered with a layer of concrete, which was an unusual practice for waste disposal. The incident remained part of urban legend and pop culture until 2014, when the site was excavated for a documentary. This excavation confirmed the presence of numerous Atari game cartridges and other hardware, validating the long-standing rumors. The finds from this excavation have been sent to museums for display and conservation. Sad to say that the value of the video games increased after they were thrown away not because of their quality, but only because of their rarity. And now it's time for today's topic. Drone accidentally discovered this in the middle of nowhere. Do you believe in mermaids? Well, this photographer certainly does now after capturing this image. Now, I don't know about you, but I've noticed that whenever a photo of a cryptid or a mysterious creature surfaces online, there's a good chance that it's not HD. My theory is that these creatures somehow intercept the quality of the photo perhaps a way for them to remain concealed. That, or the image, is simply a hoax. The one who shot this photo claims that they saw quote-unquote mermaids swimming in the ocean, but others propose that the man saw dolphins, or perhaps even stingrays, in the middle of their migration. Mermaids? Or sea creatures? I'll let you be the judge. Number 1. 50,000-year-old organisms trapped in crystal Now this might be considered one of the most astonishing recent discoveries. In a mesmerizing and intense Mexican cave system referred to as both a fairyland and hell, scientists have unearthed life encapsulated in crystals possibly dating back 50,000 years. These peculiar and ancient microbes, discovered in dormant state within the caves of Nica in Mexico's northern Chihuahua state, sustain themselves by feeding on minerals like iron and manganese. Experts determined the age of the Nica microbes by analyzing their placement within the crystals and the rate at which these crystals developed. Around 40 distinct strains of microbes, along with some viruses, were revived, showing genetic differences significantly different from most known life forms on Earth. Exploring extremophiles such as these unique microbes not only deepens our understanding of life's potential beyond Earth, but also challenges preconceptions about the conditions necessary for life. The Nika Caves, formerly an abandoned lead and zinc mine, extend 800 meters deep Isolated from the outside world before mining activities, these caverns, resembling cathedrals with crystal-lined iron walls, presented extreme conditions. Scientists, dressed in makeshift spacesuits to prevent contamination, navigated the intense heat, pushing the boundaries of where life can form and thrive. The team had a limit to their working sessions to approximately 20 minutes each before taking refuge in a cool room with a temperature of around 38 degrees Celsius, 100 degrees Fahrenheit. So which of these out-of-place and bizarre finds piqued your interest? Let me know in the comments down below. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on the screen right now, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, everybody.